from Rixie. This is Debuff, and I'm your host, Steve Skeels. Today, I'll be talking about the death of Mixer, recent news on Tencent Gaming, and the Fallout TV series. So I'm a little late on this, but I feel like I needed to talk about it because it's kind of a big deal, even if it doesn't seem like it. Microsoft just announced that they're shutting down their Twitch competitor, Mixer. Microsoft bought the company, originally known as Beam, in 2016, and they rebranded it to Mixer the next year. Their official statement on this is that they were not able to grow the platform as fast as they wanted to in order to support the operations and streamers. And I don't think you can really argue with that either. Recent statistics showed Mixer only grew by 0.2% in the last year, compared to the industry's overall 99% growth. And this was during the period that they poached big names like Ninja and Shroud. I'm also betting that this didn't change very much at all during the quarantine, with everyone consuming more media than normal. So maybe they thought it was time to just shut down for good. The worst part about all this is that the streamers found out via Twitter, which really just sucks. And Microsoft's option for the partners is to go to Facebook Gaming and reportedly receive a 2500 bonus for doing so. I don't know if that's enough money. Nobody wants to be on Facebook. I mean, seriously, they could have done better than that. If they didn't want to go to Twitch, then why not YouTube? I've never used Mixer myself, although I have stopped watching video game streams in general, so I may not be the best example, but I don't think it's about me. There were streamers on Mixer that were building communities, and now they have a huge setback. Granted, the people like Ninja and Shroud probably got a great deal, since they can go wherever they want now, and even though they were already doing well, I'm glad that they're not stuck there. One thing that really bums me out is that, at least from what I understand, Mixer had some cool features, like their low latency FTL protocol, as well as some really cool chat integration and interactivity features. But alas, that wasn't enough. I don't know how many people are really upset about Mixer going down, but I honestly wonder what Microsoft was even doing. Sure, it didn't blow up like they wanted, but I don't even remember it being advertised outside of Xbox dashboards, which is basically free advertising for Microsoft, so I think it's on them. It's always good to have competition in any industry, but unfortunately for something like this, I think people already know where they want to go, and Mixer just couldn't get the audience it needed. Tencent has been in the news a bit lately for a few things, and I just wanted to get into it. I mentioned it before when talking about System Shock, I believe, but if you don't know, Tencent is one of the biggest Chinese conglomerates, and they've been slowly working their way into the video game industry, investing in and purchasing shares of major companies. Now, there isn't anything inherently wrong with that, but companies may have to comply with Tencent's wants, which could mean censoring or removing content that they disagree with. We see this with movies fairly often, since China is such a big market for them. But anyways, let's take it from the top. Last week, the Pokemon company had another Pokemon presentation, and they showed off something big. A MOBA from Tencent. Not at all what people expected. And I think this has got a lot of controversy over the last week. Even aside from it being a disappointment, since the event had been hyped up to be some big reveal. The main issue, I think, a lot of people have is that this is a huge conglomerate and now they're going to be producing a game with the most profitable franchise around. It's just another big name in the industry that they will be profiting off of. I mean, the Pokemon company could have picked anyone else, but they're basically just going to let the rich guy profit off them. And that's all right. I'm sure it'll do fine, but I really don't know anyone that's hyped up for it. A few days after this announcement, Tencent debuted Sin, a short tech demo for an open-world FPS cyberpunk game. I know it's a tech demo, but it was basically just the character creator, so I don't really know what the game's going to be about, and I think it's just really interesting that they choose now to make a cyberpunk game. Of course, it's just my speculation, but I'd venture to guess that they see the hype around Cyberpunk 2077, and they want to hop on that train. If they make a good game, that could be cool but I don't know how this is going to play out. Like I said, we don't really know anything about it yet, but I'm sure you can bet that it won't be as great as Cyberpunk 2077, even with the waifus they showed off in the character creator. Maybe they're just trying to move forward with making some AAA games. That could be cool. But the weirdest part about this is that later, they announced their new LA-based Lightspeed Studio, 
Their gaming subsidiary is called Lightspeed and Quantum, so I guess this is fitting. But what I don't understand is if they're actually going to be working on the game that will come out of the Sin Tech demo, or if it's something else entirely. I'd guess it's something else based on the press release, but I think that's a bit strange too. I guess my question is whether they want to open a studio here to potentially make games that would be hard to sell in China, or if it's just something they want to do to maybe get a foothold in the industry and a Western audience. Whatever the reason, I'm actually very curious about this. They hired Steve Martin as executive producer, who previously worked at Rockstar Games, and they've also got other staff from Rockstar, Respawn, 2K, and Insomniac. A lot of big names there. They're also touting a crunch-free and inclusive work environment, which is a big deal right now. So if they are serious, this may actually end up being a good company to work at. I just want to know what kind of games they'll be making. The report is that they're going to be working on a AAA open world game for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, so I'm guessing it'll be quite some time before we see anything. The last topic for today is the recently announced Fallout TV show from the creators of Westworld. The show is being developed by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy in collaboration with Amazon Studios and Bethesda, so I have high hopes for this. From Variety, the show will bring, quote, the harshness of the wasteland set against the previous generation's utopian idea of a better world through nuclear energy, end quote. What's really cool is that they say they actually love these games and have spent a lot of time with them. So it seems like they would be perfect for the job. I'm sure that they already have tons of ideas and that's got me pretty excited. Love or hate what they've been doing with the recent Westworld series, you have to admit that they can craft an interesting world. And the world of Fallout would be a great place to set a TV show. Though I really hope that they don't try to do something like adapt the plot line from any of the video games. I doubt they would, but that tends to be where video game adaptations run into trouble. Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy can tell a unique story in my opinion, so I'm interested in what direction they're going to go. Just making something in the world of Fallout would be really cool on its own, but I kind of like the idea of doing something similar to The Mandalorian in the Star Wars universe. Sure, it's important to the universe in some ways, but it's also somewhat of a side story to the bigger universe going on around them. Though as I say that, I think it might feel a bit strange if they don't go with the vault dweller entering the world for the first time and having to face some big problems. Of course that makes for a classic fish out of water story, so that could be an easy thing for them to do as well. Right now we really don't know anything, so before I speculate and just go on for a while about how excited I am, I just gotta say I'm sure it's gonna be a while before we even see anything. On the optimistic side, Todd Howard said he first talked to them a few years ago so at the very least, we can assume they've been thinking about it. Maybe it's going to come sooner than we think. Debuff is hosted by me, Steve Skeels, edited and mixed by Mason Carlton. Follow us on Instagram at debuffpod. That's debuffpod. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one.